Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a short film by a French director who is uh, by now, I think, 21 years of age, which is really young. I did my first film with him three years ago when he was 18. He won also a short film. He's heading, he wants to make a long film. And um, I think he won with his first short film. He did, he won 44 awards internationally. And, uh, and for me, it was a chance to actually play not the bad guy. Well, in a way, I was the bad guy in the, but not like the typical villain who always kills people. And uh, that was one of the reasons why I said I want to do it. And 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 also normally when I play, when I do films in France, I I get to play the German villain, the German asshole, the blow. And in that case, it was a bit different, and uh, I really liked it. The next project is always the best project. <laughs> I think, as a matter of fact, when after I did Bond, mm. I thought, I, you know, it was a bit like oh, the things I got offered afterwards were um, very brutal, very, and I thought, you know what, I'm an actor. I'm not. I, at the, now, I I look at things a bit differently, and I think, you know what. I'm happy to work and if it's, there's nothing wrong with being, uh, with sitting on a certain shelf if the, self, if the shelf is thick enough and if it's feeding the family. Oh, absolutely. I mean, for sure. I mean, I did international productions before, but I never, that was uh, a very special experience for me and uh, I really enjoyed every single second and uh, I've, I made friends and uh, I consider myself being somehow in the Bond family I still have contact with them and uh, yeah it's it changed my life definitely like two years ago or two years earlier I did a, f um, um, a German English co-production called The Wanderer with Brian Brown and um, had a very small part in it, but Demi McWilliams casted that, uh, the, the, the co-production, at least she was casting for the English side and the German casting director brought me in. This is how I met Debbie McWilliams and then she invited me to come to London in, when was that, 96 or something? And uh, so I did the casting and I met with uh, with the director and I met with Barbara and uh, well I, have, I had this very bizarre quote I mean this bizarre quote that you can find everywhere because first I met the director and the, the director asked me so what did you just do so far and before, apart from Shinda's list well I really had a very small part I mainly did theater so he was asking me so what did you what did you do so far so I did, I did theater I mean did, I did this and that and this play and that play but but yeah but what did she so he was asking for it so I couldn't give him the huge a-list project at the time and um, so I was a bit well I thought well that that's it they're looking for somebody else and then um, Debbie McWilliams asked me to uh, meet Barbara Broccoli and Barbara was on the phone and uh, Debbie was uh, whispering in her ear and uh, Debbie uh, and Barbara said the uh, into the phone hold on a second I have a very good looking German guy here and I thought oh Barbara Broccoli is calling me a very good looking German guy and I, I had a uh, very short hair at the time because I was film I was in filming an army film in Germany and um, and then she was so I was like ha ah, very good looking German guy <laughs> I, fe I felt pampered, but then she looked at me and said, like, okay, you have 20 seconds to introduce yourself because I'm on the phone. I said, fuck, 20 seconds to introduce myself? What can I say? And I said, I'm big, I'm bad, I'm bold, I'm German. Five seconds, keep the rest. She smiled at me, I smiled at her, and that was my first meeting with her. And then I did actually a second meeting with, uh, with all the other uh, executives and, yeah, and the casting scene and all that. But that was my first meeting with her. I don't think so, but it's a, it's a good story though, who cares? <laughs>
it went okay, but I think everybody was under a lot of pressure because the studio was uh, near bankruptcy and they, they needed, they desperately needed the film and um, the script was not ready at all and Bruce Feuerstein, who was the script writer, um, it happened that we actually entered the lot and he was sitting uh, in the canteen typing the scenes for the day. Uh, and we didn't know what, what's going to happen because it, everything was really... It, the film had to be finished by the end of the year, um, otherwise the, uh, the studio would close. So, every, so um, Roger was under very, a lot of pressure and everybody felt that. And since that, for me, I mean, it was a dream. I'm, I'm on a Bond set. Fuck, man, I'm not the villain. How crazy is that? So, um, and my character changed all the time as well. And I had to fight. I said, listen, I mean, black, uh, I mean, white, the whiteness, the goodness of Bond can only show if you have the black, the, the bad guys who are really villain and menacing and bad and, and, um, so I had to fight for my part to be really, because, yeah, what since the, you, no, since, the no, because, I mean, for example, there's a couple of scenes they wanted to get rid of, and I said, oh, no, I mean, if, if, or if I'm not fighting back, they want to bond to escape without, and Stamp is standing in the background doing nothing, and I said, look, that doesn't work, it doesn't work, it shows, um, doesn't, it shows that Stamper is a very, weak character or and he should be physical so i was we had struggles but at the end um, i think everybody 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 was happy oh uh, no it wasn't i still have a scar here though <laughs> because uh pierce just there there was a protection but he was smashing the um, this, uh, his knife through the protection into my arm, uh, but hey, who can say he has a scar from uh, from Bond? I do. Um, no, I was I was really surprised because at the time, like things like wire removal and stuff like that, all the CGI work um, was a totally different cup of tea than it, than it is today. Today it's easy, it doesn't cost money. At the time it cost a lot of money to, for my, every CGI thing cost a lot of money. And um, I was really surprised how fast it went and um, I was quite happy with the end, I mean with the result of, uh, at the end. And uh, if you look at it now, I mean the, at the time the idea that, um, that a media mogul is the bad guy who is, influencing the world seemed a bit odd at the time 97 if you look at it now it's i mean history has uh, yeah has overcome itself well i'm still in touch with piers and uh, barbara and and debbie this is about it well it opened a lot of doors i mean i wasn't i was not uh, f filming internationally, I was uh, I was in Germany, and being my size, you know, being tall as tall as I am, it's very important to work on different territories because if you're just working on one territory, uh, it's limiting. I mean, uh, there are not that many that many parts for people who are tall than a metre quatre-vingt-seize. Well, I did, but nobody asked me to. I was really surprised. I thought, well, yeah, don't you think that I should... Nobody, I mean, nowadays, I mean, you've, you've, people send you to the gym for at least half a year. And I said, well, I, was, I did that by myself. So I should, well, I was, I was in the German national rowing team uh, when I was young. So I was, it was not like I was like that before. But um, I thought, well, I should be really tough for the... I mean, look at Bond was apart from Sean Connery um, and now Daniel Craig, um, they were never really like muscular guys. Well, they're all cooking with water, but sometimes the pot is bigger. So if you have a, a problem
production like like Bond or like, I don't know, Cloud Atlas or whatever, you have a lot of money and you have time. Money gives you time. Um, and when you have a small production, you have to rush because you don't, I don't know, you have, well, this is a short film and we have five shooting days, that's okay. Sometimes to, uh, you shoot 90 minutes in, let's say, 19 days. Or that, that's, you really have to rush, to, you, you can't take your time. Um, so that's the difference and you, as an actor you have to adjust to that. You have to be prepared and, uh, and you always have to be prepared. But uh, if you're just doing one scene it's easier to prepare for a day. Or if, you, if you're doing, I don't know, 10 minutes a day it's a different cup of tea. We had a very good, I mean, we had a fantastic relationship because we, I mean, uh, we had to work quite closely together and um, yeah, we came along and the thing is, my character originally was written as a South African. Richard Stemper is not a German name. It actually was the, um, the um, because when Bruce Feirstein was in London writing the script of Tomorrow Never Dies, he stayed at the Landmark Hotel. And the, the, uh, the manager of the Landmark Hotel was called, his name is Richard Stamper. And this is where he got the name from. Then they casted a German guy. And suddenly my character somehow became in a way German. And especially uh, Jonathan made him into a German character. By so much for German efficiency and all that stuff. He all invented that because he wanted Stamper to be German um, because it, well, it, it helped him to uh, to get a hold of Stamper, the character, who is he, and stuff like that. And so that that was uh, that was Jonathan's idea. It had happened accidentally, I would say. It, it's hap it happened accidentally. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, we had so much fun. <laughs> no, we had so much fun. He's a great guy. He, is a, he, is a, he has a huge, huge, huge heart. I must say, he's a, he has a huge heart. And, uh, and I admire him for that. And I also admire him for his uh, portrait of Bond, I think it's a good one. I think it's, it's, it stands out and it's, very per it's perfect for the time being. Um, and um, yeah, I think he's a great guy. Yeah. No, because I mean, as a matter of fact, I mean, all the fight sequences, you, uh, you, you have a, um, uh, a stunt coordinator who is coordinating the entire f uh, and then he shows you the thing and then you as the actor you, you try to uh, get into the movements of the stunt guys you, you don't, I mean on a Bond film you don't develop the, the fights by yourself so you step into an uh, already um, coordinated fight so and this is, gives you the chance so I never had the feeling that Piers wanted to beat me up in the real world. <laughs>
Um, when I was young, when I was like six years old, um, uh, I got run over by a car and I spent like, I don't know how many, how long, I can't remember exactly how long it was, but it felt like weeks. And my neighbor, bad neighbor, he was a Bond enthusiast. And at, at the time, that was, I think, Beta, was it Beta? Beta, Ma Beta Max? Beta Max, yeah. It was Beta Max? Beta, the system, camera system at the time was Beta Max, and he, he had Bond films. And so, so I was watching Bond films in the hospital. That was really rare, I mean, to, to watch a film in hospital. Um, and I got hooked, absolutely. And then when I became an actor, I thought, you know what, the, the window that could bring you into international productions as a German is only Bond. Nowadays, it's because you do have all those international series and you have all, all so the, the, the market is way more, it's more open for everybody. At the time, it was, was really tough to work internationally as a German. My favorite moment, I owe you an unpleasant death, Mr. Bond. <laughs> That's right. a fantastic line. And I get to say Mr. Bond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I owe you an unpleasant death, Mr. Bond. Mm -hmm.